Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. So we are solving the first assignment which was on the topic arrays in the interview preparation series. We have already done solving two questions and this is the third question. So before we move forward with the solution, if you guys are new here and if you are preparing for your coding interviews, make sure to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notifications to the latest videos. I also keep some live sessions and if you want to participate in the live sessions ask your doubts discuss your strategies you can join the telegram channel with the link of which is in the description i always provide notification of the live streams on the telegram channel all right so let us start with the question now we are given an integer array and there are some numbers so if all the numbers are unique in that case i have to return false if any of the number is repeating for example in the first first case here the number 1 is appearing twice so in that case I have to return true here also the number 1 is repeating the number 3 is also repeating number 2 is also repeating so I am returning true again alright so basically I have to tell whether there are duplicates or not so the first strategy or the most brute force way is to go on each element one by one and see if that element appears one more time in the given array so I will go to 1 I will see I will start reversing from the 2 and see if 1 is uh, appearing once more or not. Here in this case, once 1 is appearing one more time, so that's why I will return true from here. Here I will go to 1 and then I will see if 1 is appearing one more time, no. Then I will go to 2 and I will again check if 2 is appearing one more time, no. Then I will go to 3 and 4. Similarly, I will end up going to all of these elements and I, and I won't find that any of the element is repeating. That is why I will return false in this case. Here I will go to 1 and I will see that 1 is repeating, then I will return true. As soon as I find one of the element is repeating, I will be returning true. Alright, so for that what I can do is I can use two for loops. I will start i is equal to 0, i is smaller than n, where n is the size of the array, i++. plus plus. Then this is my element, so e is equal to nums of i. Okay, so now I will do a search. I will try to find if there is one more e available in the array or not. So for that, int j is equal to i plus one. Why i plus one? I want to go for. I want to search on the next element because the previous one we have already covered. There's no point going to the previous element if you think of it. So j is equal to i plus one. J is smaller than and j plus plus. If nums of i or nums of i is equal to e so we can just take it as e if e is equal to equal to nums of j in that case i can return true because e is appearing one more time so return true uh, or i mean um, shall we return true here yes we have to return true from here because there are repeating elements otherwise at the end i can return false let me just try to submit this and before submitting don't forget that n is the size of nums so now let me try to submit. I hope there are no compilation errors. And it is giving us TLE. The time limit got exceeded. Why? Because this solution is big of n squared in terms of time. This solution is correct. Okay. But the thing is, it will not work if the size of nums is very large, more than 10 raised to the power 3. Okay. So this is basically n square solution. We are going to we are just going to skip this one. Uh, let me just write it. This is big O of n square in terms of time and in terms of space it is constant. We are not using any extra space here. That's why it is constant in terms of space. Now let us try to figure out the next solution. I want to do better than this. So the next thing that I can do is I can sort the numbers. Okay, so after sorting all the one will come together, all the two will come together, all the three will come together. So I will just compare the two adjacent elements, right? So if I compare two adjacent elements and, and if I found out that two adjacent elements are same, then in that case, I will know that there are repeating elements. So I will have to sort this. If you don't know what these STLs are, sort and vectors and everything that we are using here, you can just go to the videos in the playlist. I have covered already all the prerequisites which are needed to solve this question. So you can just go and watch the videos. Sort nums.begin I want to start the complete nums so nums.begin it is going to return me the beginning the uh, iterator pointing to the beginning and nums.end will return me iterator pointing to the end of nums 
so it is sorted now after sort I will compare the adjacent elements so for i is equal to 0 i is smaller than n minus 1 and i plus plus if nums of i I will just make clear that why did I take n minus 1 instead of n so nums of i is equal to equal to nums of i plus 1 this is the reason why I took i smaller than n minus 1 because I will be using i plus 1 here so if I take it as i smaller than n then I will end up making i plus 1 as n which will give me the um, the so called segmentation fault because it will go out of the scope okay because we cannot access the nth index we can only access the n minus 1th index okay so if this is the case then I can just return true and finally if all the elements are unique I can return false let me try to submit this one and before that this line should be copied from here so what do you think the time complexity of the solution is it got accepted the time complexity of this solution is big O of n log n as I already told you the sort function is n log n okay so this is the time complexity what about the space complexity are we using any extra space here um, I don't think so we are not using any extra space so again the time complexity is big O of 1 in this case alright so this is the second approach now we are moving forward to the third approach okay so I already explained you I think in this video what um, sets are what maps are okay so we can use maps to count the frequency of certain elements so let me just show you one of the use of map here I'm using unordered map because I don't want to maintain the order I am not concerned about the order here I'm creating an unordered map this will be of type int comma int because corresponding to each number I will be storing the count the frequency of that number so this is the map that I created and for auto a belong to nums I will be going to each number of nums and I will do m of a plus plus that means I'm just incrementing the frequencies of those elements so um, the the uh, output in this case will be corresponding to one they will be three corresponding to two they will be two because uh, two is appearing twice corresponding to three there will be three again because three is appearing twice corresponding to four there will be two so this will be the content of the map now um, yeah what should I do now so should I go to each of the elements of the map and see if all the counts are one so yeah I can do that so for auto a belong to M I'm going to each of the element of M and M and A is actually a pair I already explained all these things in the previous video so you can go and watch if you don't know about that so a is actually a pair so a dot second will give me the count the frequency and a dot first will give me the number so let me just print the entire content of the map then you will have a better clarity what maps are so I'm just printing C out a dot first a dot first will give me the number and a dot second is going to give me the frequency of that number so let me just write, try to print this F I R S T first alright and at the end I should return something so let me just return one from here yeah I am returning one to uh, just complete the syntax okay I'll just forget about the last return statement oh unordered map of int comma int uh, the spelling is incorrect alright let me try to run this now and we will see the content of the map um, actually wait a second I should I should use this example here instead of an empty string that I'm passing I should use this example so according to me the content of the map should be corresponding to 1 corresponding to 1 there is 3 corresponding to 3 there is 3 corresponding to 4 there is 2 corresponding to 2 there is 2 these are the numbers on the left hand side on the right hand side these are the frequencies of those numbers alright so this is the content of the map and we can see there is no order because we are using unordered map and instead of unordered map if I use ordered map then uh, the f these numbers will be sorted so the first number will be 1 corresponding to 1 there is 3 then 2 then 3 then 4 alright so but if you use ordered map it will take me n log n to insert all these elements if I take unordered map it will just take me big O of n alright the unordered maps are actually faster so if we don't want to maintain the order we can use unordered map here 
so now I can go to each of these elements and I will see if a dot second is equal to 1 so if a dot second is somewhere greater than 1 that means we are having repeat repetitive elements or duplicate elements so we can return true or 1 otherwise at the end we can return 0 let me just try to submit this now and hope that it gets accepted and it is getting accepted so what do you think the time complexity here is the time complexity again is big O of n. Why? Because we are inserting all these n elements into the map and then uh, we are going to each of the elements of the map but mm, the elements inside the map will either be equal to the total elements or will be less than the total number of elements in n. Depend if there is a duplicate or not. So in the worst case we are using big O of n extra big O of n time and how much extra space? So in the worst case it might be possible that all the elements are unique and they will take big O of n extra space inside the map so the space complexity is big O of n in the worst case so could you see here initially the space was constant but the time was n square then we went to n log n time and the space was constant again here the time complexity became big O of n and the space complexity also became big O of n so as we are uh, trying to improve the time complexity we are compromising the space complexity right so this is called space-time trade-off. Now, let us discuss one more solution using set. Okay. Again, you can learn about set from uh, this video in the playlist. Okay. So we are coming back here. We are using unordered set. We are not bothered about the order. So again, unordered set of type int s. Okay. Now insert all the elements into set s dot for auto a belong to nums s dot insert a and finally um, what I can do so basically set has a property the property of set is in like mathematics all the elements in the set should be unique so even if we insert some duplicate elements it will only store one copy in this case it the set will only store one two three and four okay so the size of the set will be 4 in this case but the size of nums is uh, much more than 4 here also the size of set will be 4 and the size of nums is 4 as well in this case the size of set will be 1 2 3 only 1 2 3 will be stored in the set so size will be 3 and uh, but the size of nums is 4 so we will see if nums dot size if this thing is uh, equal to s dot size so in this case I will return false why uh, because all the elements are unique that is why the size of nums will be equal to size of s otherwise in all the ca other cases I will return a true from here uh, why we have to return a true because uh, we will find there are some duplicate elements that is why the size of s is smaller than the size of nums okay so let me just try to submit this and again what should be uh, what is the time complexity for this solution the time complexity is again big O of n we are going to each of the elements one by one what is the space complexity again it is big O of n alright uh, big O of n because we are inserting uh, the elements into set s in the best case it might be possible that all the elements are same all the elements are same let us say all the elements are one so this is the content of the array 1 1 1 1 so in that case only one element will be stored in the set so the size of the set will be 1 so in that case that space complexity will be constant but we always talk about the worst case in the worst case it might be possible that all the elements are unique 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and so on so in that case all these elements will be stored in the set s so the size will be n in the worst case of the set s that's why big O of n in terms of space and big O of n in terms of time big O of n alright so this is it for the solution if you like the video hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you are following the playlist please follow it with consistency uh, the consistency is basically the key here alright guys so thanks a lot